nursing assistants. This topic is on cleanliness and hygiene. It includes practices of personal hygiene, cleanliness, scheduling of routine hygiene, respecting the individual, oral hygiene, assisting with skin care, massage, and the importance of being observant. Practices of personal hygiene. Practices of daily living. Activities of daily living ADLs include hygiene, mouth care, perineal care, bathing, clean clothes, eating, grooming. A toothbrush when used is held against the patient's teeth at a 45 degree angle. Cleanliness and hygiene. Benefits of hygiene. It promotes both physical and emotional health. It keeps the skin and the mucous membranes of the mouth healthy. It prevents skin conditions that could interrupt the body's first line of defense. It also prevents the body and breath odors. Scheduling of routine care. Schedules. Regular schedules for good hygiene. Early morning care, AM care, afternoon care, and evening care. The care that's provided as needed, PRN care, would be for a person, for instance, in a coma, an incontinent person, or a person who is diaphoretic, which means sweaty. Concerns for long-term care. Allow the resident plenty of time. Allow the resident to do as much as he or she can. Some facilities use bathing teams to provide care. You must allow the residents more control over their care and decisions. Respecting the individual. Adjustment and schedules, special circumstances. Personal preferences should be respected. Cultural and religious beliefs and the person's wishes should all be respected. Question one, physical and emotional health can be promoted by A, understanding the resident's needs, B, good communication, C, maintaining a routine, and D, good personal hygiene. The answer is D, good personal hygiene. Personal hygiene cleanliness helps to promote both physical and emotional health. Cleanliness helps to prevent sickness, and feeling clean can help an individual to feel relaxed and well cared for. The nursing assistant wears gloves during oral care to protect her from coming in contact with saliva. Assisting with oral care, flossing is recommended once a day because brushing alone is not enough. Oral care, problems resulting from poor oral hygiene, gingivitis, periodontitis, dental caries, cavities, and halitosis, bad breath. A person that is unconscious is placed on his sideline position or the nursing assistant turns the patient's head on the side when providing oral care. The nursing assistant avoids placing her fingers in the unconscious patient's mouth because he may bite down involuntarily. Oral care for a person with natural teeth. Oral care comprises brushing, flossing, and using mouthwash. Oral care should be provided during early morning, after meals, and at night. Oral care for a person with dentures. Dentures that fit properly allow proper chewing of food and do not hurt the mouth. Personal preference for wearing dentures is to be respected. Dentures are expensive and difficult to replace. Dentures are stored in lukewarm water or dental solution. They are never left out to dry. Oral care for the unconscious person. Breathing through an open mouth leads to drying and cracking of the oral mucous membranes and lips. Explain the procedure to the person even though he might not seem to be aware. Guard against aspiration by turning the head to the side. Use padded tongue blade to keep the mouth open. 
Question two, providing good oral hygiene is essential to ensure good health in the residents. However, oral care is usually not provided to an unconscious person to avoid choking him. True or false? The answer is false. Oral care can be provided to an unconscious person. Specific steps are taken to prevent further injury to the patient and to avoid causing aspiration or choking. Assisting with perineal care. What is perineal care? Cleaning of the perineum and the associated structures. Females, the area between the bottom of the vagina and anus, as well as the vulva. Males, the area between the root of the penis and the anus, as well as the penis. Perineal care schedule. Perineal care is important for the prevention of infection, prevention of skin breakdown, and odor. Perineal care is provided at least once a day and as necessary, PRN. Care must be taken to preserve the person's modesty. When providing female perineal care, for the purposes of modesty, drape with a bath blanket. Place the washcloth at the top of the vulva and stroke downward toward the anus. First clean each side and then the middle. Clean the anal area by placing a washcloth in front of the body and stroking it toward the bath. Perineal care is provided at the end of the bath. A penis that is circumcised is one where there was removal of the foreskin. Question three, daily perineal care is essential to help A, the resident's comfort level, B, prevent infection, C, follow facilities policies, and D, all of the above. B, the answer is to prevent infection. Making sure the peritoneum is clean is important because it helps prevent infection and it helps to prevent skin breakdown and odor. Assisting with skin care. The first line of defense against infection is the skin and the mucous membranes. Bathing benefits. It makes the person feel better, makes them feel relaxed and refreshed, cleans the skin and eliminates body odors, exercises the muscles, stimulates the blood flow to the skin, helps the patient or resident meet the needs of love and belonging and self-esteem. It gives the nursing assistant an opportunity to observe for skin problems and bond with the patient or resident. Bath frequency. It should be the person's personal choice, the person's state of health. It may depend on the weather uh, or the person's level of activity. It depends on the person's ability to care for himself and your facility's policy and procedures. Bathing is typically provided in the morning. When running a bed bath, the water is usually between 110 and 115 degrees. Bathing supplies, soap and no rinse cleanser, bath oils, lotions and creams, body powder, deodorants and antiperspirants, and a variety of linens. Standard bath techniques, a complete bath, partial bath, shower or tub bath, which is the preferred method, or a bed bath. Be observant. Report to the nurse new rashes, bruises, broken skin, bleeding or unusual odors, areas that are red, pale, or have bluish cast, swollen or tender areas, and areas that are burning or itching. Report to the nurse if you observe new hair loss, flaky, itchy, or sore scalp, or the presence of nits, lice, redness or yellow discoloration of the sclera, the eyes, yellowing or thickening of the fingernails or toenails, and or change in mental status of the patient. Massage. Massage stimulates the circulation, relaxes the patient or resident, promotes sleep, 
It calms sick babies and confused or demented elderly people who become agitated easily. Massage can be performed in either the prone or the lateral position. Massage promotes physical and emotional health, and it gives the nursing assistant an opportunity to observe the person's skin for potential problems. Massage precautions. Check with the nurse or read the person's nursing care plan before beginning. It should not be performed on a person with fractured ribs or a back injury. And it should not be performed on a person who has recently had back surgery. Back massage strokes. Here's an illustration of three combination of gliding strokes and down strokes. Question four, when assisting a patient or resident with their cleanliness and hygiene, it's most important to provide which of the following? A, privacy, B, proper equipment, C, personal preference of bath products, D, enough time. Answer, A, privacy. Each of the choices are important to remember when assisting a resident or patient with their hygiene and cleanliness. However, the most important is providing privacy. The end.